Hi. I'd like to show you how to start on the potter's wheel. The very basics of throwing a bowl, centering, opening, raising the walls, and then finally shaping and getting the bowl off the wheel. To start with, you need a few tools, mainly these guys, your hands. A towel is very nice to have because you're going to be drying your hands off periodically. Then, you also need a few tools. You need a bucket of water. You need a small sponge. You'll need a cutting wire to cut the pot off the wheel. Now, a chamois is used to refine and round the lip. So you'll need a chamois. And this is just a piece of small piece of leather. I've used thick plastic, but a chamois leather. And then to shape the tool pot, a rib is a really good idea. Now, this one has a nice semicircle. So when I'm shaping the bowl, I can put this in and create that inside curve that makes the bowl so beautiful. So a wooden rib, a needle tool. This is used in case, you know, the top edge isn't quite straight. This is a good way to trim it off. And then finally, a little wooden knife. And it's got a sharp blade, and this is good for trimming. And, you know, say you wanted to put some lines in the piece. I have a couple balls of clay ready. This is one and a half pounds. And to start with, you want your clay to be plastic. You want it to be not too sticky. You want it to be able to bend without cracking. You want it even all the way through. So out of the bag, you could take it and just bang it into a ball. It's easier if you wedge it a little bit to get those particles flowing and soften up the clay a little bit. And then tap it into a ball. Now the wheel head has these circles on it and you can use those to help center. You also have a pedal. And the pedal's like a gas pedal, but it holds the speed. So you can push it down and take your foot off of it, and it will hold speed. So remember, a big part of throwing pot is you holding still, you putting your hands in one place, holding still, and gradually moving. When you're starting, I'm going to slap center it when it's going really, really slowly like this. When I'm centering, it's going to be going about as fast as it's going to be going the whole time. Not as fast as the wheel can go, but somewhere in between there. Just a nice medium speed. And then in the finishing, I might slow it down a little bit. But most of the time, it's going to be going at a very steady, steady speed. So I've got my ball of clay, dry wheel head. Don't get this wet, because you want to get that clay stuck to the wheel head. The clay is plastic, the wheel head's metal, they stick beautifully, as long as you throw it down. Now, I didn't throw it quite on center. Push it into center. Give it a little push. Get it as close as you can. If you have a ball of clay and... You can go by these rings and check it. Turn it on. Well, that's actually pretty good. Still not quite there. Now, look, I'm going to wrap my legs around the wheel. I'm going to put my elbows onto my knees. I'm going to put my hands on the clay and take them off because you don't want to touch the clay unless it's moving. So you get it going. Now I'm going to slap center it. And get it going very slowly, and as I'm as it's going around, I'm going to hit it with the palms of my hands. If 
Very nice rhythm. So it creates kind of a dome, and it's even more on center. The next step is to seal that bottom edge. If you leave that open, what's going to happen is water will get under it, and it may slide off. So what you want to do is take your fingertip and push the edge of that clay down to the wheel. Just smear it onto the wheel so there's no gap along the bottom edge. Okay. Once you have it slap centered, stuck to the wheel, get the wheel going, take your foot off the pedal, lock your legs around the wheel, splash a little water on the clay. Make sure your, both your hands are wet. Now I'm going to be centering by pushing the clay down and towards the middle. The clay is going around, so you want to go approach it slowly, put your hands on it slowly, and then push in. Relax and let go. Very important to relax before you let go, and it's very important not to just jump on it. So you put your hands on it slowly, push, hold still till it feels like it's smooth, let go slowly. Let me show you what happens if I let go quickly. Okay, feels good, all off center. It's because I let go before it had a chance to go all the way around. To fix it, just put your hands back on it, slowly lean into it. Now my hands are wrapped all the way around, but I'm not squeezing with my fingers. This is, you see where it's hitting my hand? It's right here, right here, and a bit on the top. So it's just right in this area right here. Now sometimes on larger pieces of clay, or if this is a little bit off, you can do what's called coning. And coning is where you push the clay at the bottom, the clay starts moving up into a cone. And you make it into a smaller piece. And it's much easier to center smaller pieces than big pieces. So to do that, put your hands again on it. And this time I'm going to tilt my hands a little and push in. And look how the clay starts going up. Push in, and when it starts moving up, make sure you move your hands up with it, or you'll end up with a ball of clay coming off the top. So, just up, relax, and let go. Now I want to bring this down to a nice, centered lump of clay. So I'm going to push it over. I'm going to use this part of my hand, that strong part, and put it on that halfway point, right about here. Now, so these fingers don't go out of the, out, and also so my hands are steady, elbows are into my body, but I'm also supporting my right hand with my left hand, like a pivot. So I'm going to push. And if it starts wiggling around, stop pushing and stay there for a sec. Let it go around and around and around. So I'm going to keep going down. So you go down, hold still till it feels smooth. Down again. You see how it's doming. It's not absolutely flat. There's no hole in the center. And that's because I'm pushing on my half of the clay. Just gradually bring your, the heel of your hand down. This is when you decide, how wide do I want to make this bowl? Well, I could keep pushing down and this would spread out. If I take my left hand and push it against the side, and then push down, see what happens? It stops right at my left hand. And if you do the two moves at the same time, you're pushing down and in and in. You just hold still. Relax. It's on center. 
Sometimes you'll get some extra clay out here. Take your finger, put it on the side like this, and just bring it down to the wheel head until it's even all the way. So, clay centered. Don't go anywhere. Don't do the next step until it's on center. You can check by putting your finger in front of you, and if it hits evenly all the way around, you're, on, you're good to go. You're in, on center. Now, the next step is to make a hole in the center. I take my longest finger, the center finger, and one, sometimes two, sometimes four fingers next to it to keep the, that middle finger really steady. So I'm going to find the middle and push it down. Make a little divot. Uh, notice I'm using my left hand. I'm helping it with my right hand. So add a little water, splash some water in there, and keep going down. Now this is going to be a bowl that I want to trim a foot on. And you have to leave extra clay at the bottom. If this is going to be, a, if this would be a vase or a bottle or a cup, I could make this even all the way from the wall to the bottom, maybe a quarter of an inch thick. Since I want to trim a foot, I have to leave an extra quarter inch, so I'll leave half an inch down at the bottom. You can tell by putting your thumb on the wheel head, your finger in the middle. Trust yourself. You can actually feel how thick that is. If you're not sure, stop the wheel, take your needle tool, poke it. Take your finger and bring it right down to where the clay is and then pull the, it out. And I have about half an inch. So after this gets to be leather hard, I'm going to trim off half of that. So Feel that little hole. Notice it's conical. It's not straight down. It's easier to keep it on center if you go down at an angle instead of going straight down. So the next step is to make the bottom of the pot. So what I'm going to do is put my hand back in, and instead of keeping my fingers stiff and straight, I'm going to bend them. So it's like grabbing, grabbing a bicycle handlebar. My thumb is resting on the outside of the pot, so it, and I'm going to help it with my right hand. So here we go. Now think about what the bottom of the pot should be like. A good bowl has a nice curve, so right about here, instead of keeping it absolutely flat on the bottom, I'm going to raise my fingers up just a little bit and get a curve happening already. Remember, don't go past this bottom edge. Go past it, the whole thing collapses. So let's see what the inside looks like. Could be better. It has a little divot in the middle and it has some rings. This is the time to smooth and compress the bottom. So wet your fingers. Put them on the outside. Hold still. See, it's getting smooth. And it's just really this one finger. And then slowly move your fingers into the center. And you can do that a bunch of times. You could also, if you have a hole in the center, put your finger in the hole in the center and then push the clay away and it will do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to smooth and compress the top. Now sometimes when you do this, it may spread out. It's very easy to get the clay to go out because of the centrifugal force. It's hard to keep it straight up and down. So if this happens, the wall's still thick, I can continue, I can bring it in now. What most people want to do is they put both hands on the outside. Try this. Just put 
your right hand on the outside, your left hand on the inside, and I'm going to just push it in, keeping my hands separated. Keep the wheel going at a steady speed. And just push that top in. So now it's about ready to lift. I'm going to straighten the top edge, and you'll be doing this all the way through. If that top edge gets a little irregular, just put your fingertips, your thumb on the outside, finger on the inside, a little bit below the rim. Take the hard part of the side of your finger and rest it on the top. Let it go around and around and around. And you'll find it'll smooth off. Now you may notice I'm putting water on it and taking water off. If you use too much water, the clay gets softer and softer and softer. It's like a very dense sponge. So you have to just kind of keep adding water, taking it away. Now I want to raise the wall. And the principle of this is one pressure point on the outside, one pressure point on the inside. You push in, you push out, and your inside finger is a little bit higher than your outside. Lock your hands together, get straight up and down, and you move up. Now look, I didn't move my fingers together. They want to go together. As you're going up, your fingers are going to want to go touch. You want to try to keep that wall even all the way up. So what you do is you push in, push out, and hold still and keep them the same distance. And to thin the walls, instead of trying to do it all in one shot, you do it three times. Each time your fingers get a little bit closer and the wall gets a little bit thinner. So I'm going to wet the wall, and a good way to wet it is just to squeeze a little water at the top. I'm going to put my finger on the outside, my finger on the inside. Now, if your finger is not strong enough, you may want to use your knuckle. And you do that by grabbing your finger with your thumb, and then grabbing your thumb with your other fingers. And I see that's my pressure point from the outside. I'm going to so I'm going to put my fingers on the inside, knuckle on the outside, push in a little bit, hold still, and go up. When you get to the top, don't go all the way to the top. Stop a little bit below and let go slowly. Fix the rim. It's curving out a little bit. Clean off that extra clay. do it again. Push in. This time I'm going to push out a little bit from the inside. Hold still. And go up. Relax the top. And press the rim. Now you'll find if you're doing it right, it should go straight up. If you're doing it with too much pressure on the inside, it'll start going out. We'll do that after you thin the walls. I'm going to do one more pull. So I'm making a good starting point on the outside. Wet the walls. Push in. Push out. See the bulge? There's a bulge out there now where my inside finger is and go on up. Relax. Keep that top edge a little bit thicker. Now I want to make this into a bowl. way to do that is to put more pressure on the inside than the outside. Pretty simple. Make sure it's wet, and I'm going to support it. I'm going to put my hand on the outside, and always try to keep your hands together. Hand on the outside, hand on the inside. My thumb is just grab, you know, in my other hand, so it's they move together. And I'm just going to stretch it out. Again, just like the lifting, you don't try to get it out into the final form all at once. Do it several times. You can make beautiful bowls just using your fingers. 
takes very, very little pressure once the walls are thin like this to move that clay around. Just keep shaping it until you're happy with the shape. Keep that lip a little bit thicker. This extra clay out here is going to get trimmed. Let's see what it looks like. That's okay. It's a little bit conical. Remember, you don't want to defy gravity. You can't defy gravity in this world. So you can't go way out here. If you want to, make sure there's clay underneath it. So what I can do now is finish shaping it with a tool. My hand's kind of thick. The rib, much thinner. Also, it's a beautiful shape. It's got the shape I want for the bowl. I'm going to dampen a little bit. I'm going to grab it with the round side facing down, and the blade is facing away from the movement of the wheel. So the wheel's going this way, the blade is going this way. It's at a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to push it, put it on the bowl gently. Remember, never attack the bowl, sneak up on it. So I'm going to put it on, hold still, just gradually move it down. A little thickness there that I want to get out, so I'm going to just hold it there for a little while. Now I'm going to keep going, keep going, and I'm going to stop when I get right to the center. Now, as you're going, you can always take this off, clean it off, and put it back in. I'm going to do it one more time. Now, where people make a mistake is they don't pay attention to the inside. The inside will reflect what the outside looks like. So many people just worry so much about the outside. Worry about the inside. And then when you trim it, it will match. Round this off a little bit more. And remember, a good bowl has a smooth, continuous curve. That smooth, continuous curve, if you took a marble, it would roll back and forth and back and forth without any bumps. It makes it much easier to eat out of. Say you have soup or ice cream, it doesn't get into all those cracks and crevices. You can get every little last bit with a spoon. right to the center. Edge is a little bit rough. Now look what happens. If I put my sponge on there and I go quickly, it's all over the place. How do you fix that? Finger on either side of the rim and hold still. Not squeezing, I'm just leaving a gap wide enough for the clay to get through and it goes back on center. Now, by using the sponge, this clay has grog in it. So you wipe away the slip, leaving the grog, and it'll be rough on the outside. To prevent that, you use a little piece of chamois leather. And you take the edge, put it on the edge of the bowl, at a bit of an angle, and just don't push down, just wrap it around and hold still for some revolutions and let go slowly. About ready to take this off. I have lots of extra clay down here. It's not particularly round. Could take it off right now, but what I do is I make a little groove down there and I use this stick. I put it against the wheel head and push it in. The further you push it in, the bigger the bevel will be. Now the stick will be about here. And then if you just push the stick in, it makes a really sharp, rough, jaggedy edge. Put the sponge against the bottom of the pot first. Then push the stick in. And take the stick out, sponge out, and you'll get a nice, round, smooth foot. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the sponge against the wheel head. I'm going to take the stick and rest it against there. Really grab it hard because I don't want to push you around. 
and then just slowly bring it in to the bottom of the pot. I have some water still on the wheel head. I'm going to clean that all off. If you have slip on the wheel head, get it off. And to take this off, take off the splash pan. Now, if you have one of the Shimpo Aspire wheels, you can take the whole wheel head off. But remember, you have to cut the pot first. This, I'm going to just slide it off. So, to take this off, there are a couple little tabs on either side of the splash pan. You push those down, it tilts, and it pops off. Get a board. Now the board should be damp. Just dampen it. You don't want a puddle of water, that's bad. Just damp. Put a splash of water on either side of the pot. Now, cutting wire, it's very important you hold it very, very tight. This is made for all different sizes of pots. This is too big for this little pot, so I'm going to hold one end, wrap it around my other hand, and then hold it between my fingers, pushing it down very, very tight against the wheel, and I'm going to pull that water underneath the pot. Be careful not to touch the top. It's still very, very soft. Down the bottom, it's thicker and can be pushed. Now, if it doesn't move well, just do it again. Okay. Now put the board tight up against the edge of the board, the wheel head, and just slide it on. See where my fingers are? Right down at the bottom. Now, you're going to leave that until it firms up to a hard cheese consistency. Be able to turn it over and trim a foot. I have wet clay on here. I can't throw another pot on here yet. Take your sponge, get as much of that water off the wheel head as possible. Take your wooden rib your wooden stick, hold it against the wheel head, and just scrape that extra clay off. I can reuse this clay. Dry off the wheel head. Oh, I usually just sponge it, but just to be sure, to make sure it doesn't slide, take the towel and wipe it. Now, if you have a Brent wheel, put this back on, all you need to do is tilt it. Now the big side goes facing you and the pins are on the big side, the holes are on the outside. Now I can take, and remember when you're doing this, make a bunch of these. Not too big, not too big, something you can hold in both hands, like a nice size of orange. And then also remember, they will dry out if it's left out in the air. So you have some sitting waiting for you, cover them up. So that way they won't dry and you can just keep using them. Remember, just throw it down. Instead of using my knuckle this time, I've taken the sponge and I've wrapped it around my fingertip like this. I want to make a different shape bowl. I'm going to make one with a flat rim. Make sure the top edge is straight. I'm going to take a flat edge of the rib, put my hand underneath the rim, and put the rib inside the bowl. 
go around and around and around and slowly tilt that down. When you do that, this gets sharp again, so you need to chamois it. Splash pan off. A little water on either side. Take a board, dampen it. Pull that water underneath the pot. I'll do it twice just to make sure it slides. Put the board and slide it onto the board. Clean off that extra clay. Get ready for the next one. Thank you.